uh, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody here. Um, welcome everybody online. Uh, this is today another episode of Seven Minutes to Convince That. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Agata Trzaska. I'm part of the uh, prosthodontic department of International Advanced Dentistry. Bravo. 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 <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for this warm welcome. Um, so today I'm going to try to convince you that uh, high quality photos are crucial for your outcomes. Let's see. Um, so we all know that uh, Taking good photos is very important. There is a vast list of advantages um, of, of why we should take good photos. Professional growth, uh, better diagnosis, uh, documentation, treatment planning, marketing, growing our portfolio. This is all very important, but still not always we take many photos. So today I will be not able to talk about all of these advantages from the list, but I will try to convince you using just a few of them. So let's see the treatment planning and communication. Um, I think we cannot speak about photography in dentistry if we don't uh, speak about digital smile design. There are many softwares that uh, you're able to, to design your smile digitally, but the one is the, the loudest lately, in my opinion, is the Smile Cloud. Uh, so Smile Cloud is a software that we can storage uh, big databases, we can storage the photos of our patient, x-rays and also 3D um, files. We can edit, we can easily show to the patient the before and after, uh, but uh, most of all we can make designs of the uh, plant rehabilitation or makeovers. So using this kind of softwares, and here this is a smile cloud, uh, we can choose from a big library of natural teeth uh, we can change the color of them, the shape, the size, and we can observe how it's changed the human, the patient's face and smile. <laughs> human. They don't have yet the version for animals. <laughs> um, yes, so, so these kind of tools, they help us a lot to, com to communicate with the patient. And also, of course, it helps our imagination to see uh, how the little details in change of shape of the teeth, they can actually influence so much the smile and the, the look of the face of the patient. And using these tools, we can influence actually the final result and it's uh, way less of surprise also for us, the final outcome. The photos also help in the face of the mock-up, so uh, we can objectively evaluate the smile of the patient in two dimensions. Like for example, in, in this case, we can see very clearly that the tooth number 13 is a bit too long. We can communicate it to the laboratory and like this we can uh, change and readjust the work before it's done. So not only in prosthodontics, also in aesthetics uh, using direct composites, we can use a photo analysis. Uh, the face analysis in the photo. So, for example, here we have a case of a young woman that uh, she agreed to actually undergo the orthodontical treatment. She will be your patient, Lena, <laughs> very soon. But before uh, we start, she asked for a little harmonization of her smile. Um, so, making the, the face analysis, we can see a few things. Uh, we can see that uh, the midline is deviated. Uh, so the yellow line is the, the midline, the correct midline of the face, so it's, it's uh, quite deviated. The long axis of the teeth, they are uh, tilted, which is actually what bothers this patient the most. Uh, we can see quite a big asymmetry of the lower lip in the smile. And also we can see that the patient has um, ceramic veneers on the lateral incisors, which she will not change uh, before the orthodontic treatment, so we have to move in between, uh, in the space in between the lateral incisors. So what can we do? Um, photography and face and smile analysis will help us to make kind of a strategy. So in this strategy we can see, and I planned it like this for uh, four uh, simple steps. Adding on the volume on the distal on the 21, the upper third. Adding on a volume on the, on the mesial of the 21, the lower third working on the mesial angle on the, of the 21, and working on the mesial surface of the upper third of the uh, 11. 
So here it looks quite obvious, uh, and um, for me, it, it really made my work easier. I, I truthfully doubt that we could be so objective and plan it so easily while working directly and modeling the composite in the mouth of the patient. So not only the treatment planning communication, what about the skill um, enhancement? So I would say that the, the photo camera is our best friend. It's the, also the most critical friend, but as it's a constructive criticism, um, it still keeps being our best friend because this is actually what we need the most, constructive criticism. And taking this, the photos of step by step in our treatment allows us to observe if we did everything correct if maybe we could improve something, like here we can see, for example, air bubbles. Maybe it's a little detail, but uh, our treatments are made of little details. We can observe the edges of the preparations. We can avoid the future mistakes in the next treatments. We proceed. So, photo camera helps a lot. Sometimes we think our, um, our treatment is perfect. Like, for example, here, when I was thinking that the polishing of these direct composites was perfect and was very good. And when I took the photo, I understood it was terrible. <laughs> so actually, these are the things we don't see with our bare eyes. Sometimes we have the case like here, uh, thanks Jean and Mariana, um, the crown over implant. And only after um, taking the photo, we could see a bit of excess of the cement which we wouldn't have noticed if it wasn't for a macro, macro photo. In aesthetic dentistry, it's very important to take these kind of photos. Uh, we can observe opacities, translucencies, uh, color matching. We can observe if our direct restorations, in, in this case it was here and here, and on the both, both of the canines, so we can observe if the light reflexes are symmetric, if they are even, if the micro and macro texture of our restorations is properly done. Um, so there was a study published in, uh, in uh, the book Liars by Style Italiano in 2017 that was um, proving that uh, depending on the color of the background we use in the photo, we can see different properties of the teeth. So depending if it was black, white, or gray, the red here was like insignificant, but these two ba uh, three basic colors, black, gray, and white, it was said that it can help us to notice better the, the particular uh, properties. Okay, but for example then, it was proven differently in a study published in Journal of Dentistry in 2021. And it was said that there was no influence of the background color on the perceptibility uh, whatsoever. But there was a very uh, interesting conclusion that was saying that dentists and dental technicians showed greater ability to perceive slight color differences compared to other groups of observers. So is it like we have a superpower? It's good to hear, right? <laughs> So if we have this superpower, let's use good tools for it. Uh, of course, there are some benefits always of taking any kind of photo, even if it's uh, taken with a cell phone. But we can see how much different quality we can uh, obtain using good tools and not so well good tools. Uh, and let's please remember that quality matters. Using a good quality of photos, we can reach to more of these positions from um, the list and take profit from more benefits of this. So I have no more time to talk about another positions from the list, but I hope only with this seven minutes I managed to convince you that capturing of high quality photos is essential for achieving good results in dentistry. Thank you.